What we need to do is as for any block or any procedure, before you start the procedure, you have to know that what machine you are going to do, use, what patient position you are going to opt for, and what type of nerve block are you going to give for the patient. So this patient has cellulitis of the wrist. And uh, we have chosen the axillary approach to brachial plexus block in him. And what we need to do is, we have to set the ultrasound machine first for appropriate settings to get a good view of the, of the axillary artery, as well as the axillary vein and the brachial plexus around it. So I will just tell you what the settings which we have done. If you can focus on my finger. Yes, this is the power on and off switch which you switch on the machine with. Just switch it off. I'm just switching it off and I'll switch it on to show you what adjustments we have made. Switch it on, please. So this is a power off and on switch. Now remember what I'm holding in my hand is the transducer probe and the transducer head. Right? This is the heart of the machine. The entire box which you see here is just computer, nothing else. And this doesn't cost much but 80% of the cost of the machine is of the transducer probe. And it depends on which transducer probe for what type of block you have to use. So here if you see my transducer probe, it's a linear array probe. Linear array means the transducer head is absolutely straight. So that whatever sound waves which are generated by the piezoelectric crystals here are sent parallel and whatever the transducer head receives are also reflected waves which are near or less parallel to what it is going to form an image of. Now remember when we talk about the transducer head, the ultrasound mechanism of is that it produces ultrasound waves which actually only 1% of which are transmitted and 99% of it are reflected back. So this is what the transducer has to do. It is a very good listener to the echoes created by the ultrasound beams which are reflected back. The transmission part is just 1%, but what it receives is what it forms into images. Now, how the images are created? Now, when one part of the ultrasound beam is reflected back, if it is a hyper-dense tissue like bone, gallstones or diaphragm, it'll, it'll be a hyperdense tissue and the reflection would be complete. And therefore, they will form bright dots. So each beam will form a dot. Whereas, if it goes across tissues, it is likely to form gray dots. And when it goes across fluid, blood, right, it'll form something which is black. So it's a composition of gray, white and black dots which are, which are, which are uh, compressed and an image is formed onto the screen. So ultrasound transducer is a very good listener to the echoes by the way of which the image of an ultrasound is processed. Transmission is only one part of it. Now as Dr. Raj Mohanoran would have already told you, that the ultrasound waves are more than 20,000 hertz. Hertz is just a measuring way, the measurement of the frequency of the ultrasound waves. Frequency means cycles per second. So cycles per second is measured in hertz. Now normally if you take from zero to 20 hertz, it is infrasound. From 20 to 20,000 is the hertz at which you are able to hear. That's an audible hertz. More than 20 hertz is ultrasound. And when we go into megahertz, that is 2.5 megahertz onwards, it becomes medical ultrasound. Now, most of the beams would be reflected back. But if the beam is not reflected back and absorbed, it produces heat in the tissues. And that's how ultrasound is also used as a therapeutic phenomena to treat pain because it generates heat at higher frequencies at areas where the ultrasound beam is totally absorbed and taken up and therefore 
helps to heal or relieve pain as well so this is how we are uh, this is how the ultrasound is basically defined now i've already told you what kind of transducers are we are using this is a linear array transducer it is flat footprint if you can see it's totally flat right and the beam which it produces is just 1 mm slice so it will just produce a 1 mm slice beam from here now wherever you angle the beam those are the tissues through which it is going to get transmitted and get reflected back and an image will be processed onto the screen right so the angle is what we look for whether it's an oblique cut whether it's a total transverse cut or whether it's a longitudinal cut so this 1 mm beam is the most important part which you are going to aim or subject a tissue to aim this beam at now the other uh, uh, transducer probes which are there are curvy linear which are which are curved if you can show this this is a curved array probe now the difference between this two are the image which is produced by this linear probe is large in sector the entire sector which is which is touching the body it will give you a large sector image but in here you will find only the central part would be would be focused but the sector would be narrowed because it goes like this so the sector here would be narrowed but here the sector is wide here it is totally parallel but here it can go diverse right at an angle so these are the two differences now coming to what are the frequency of probes which are we which we use normally for superficial frequencies for superficial nerves and vessels you need a good resolution you don't need to penetrate the tissues so when you good need good resolution the frequency has to be high now remember when the ultrasound frequency high means the waves are small right and they are multiple and therefore it only penetrates the superficial part and gives you a very good resolution of the superficial tissues but when the wave become larger they are become deep waves it increases its penetration but the resolution comes down right so you do not get a good resolution but you get good penetration now penetration would help you to view the deeper structures like sciatic nerve so that's how you decide which frequency and which type of probe you have to use now when we talk about this linear probe this frequency is somewhere between 8 to 13 megahertz so that's the frequency which we look for to give a good resolution of the superficial structures which can be identified and then following that you can perform a block to make sure that your needle is in line and reaches the structure which you want to target right now just coming back to the ultrasound machine so if you see here there is a dot this dot corresponds to the marker here onto the ultrasound probe this